Hey YouTubians, what's up? I'm another XYZ and welcome back to another Club Banger. Today we're hanging out in r slash unexpectedly wholesome. It's a subreddit that I have honestly been a big huge fan of because it hits me right in the feely spots and I enjoy it oh so much. So let's go ahead and top right on in. Sir, you've got a message from your wife. What is it? I haven't heard anything from her recently. She says she misses you and thinks of you every day. Dang, look at his face though. Look at the like, I don't know, like the colonel or whatever, the higher ranking officer than that dude's face with like the way his lips are all perched up. He looking pretty sad. Writing prompts. You are in charge of assigning every child on earth, the monster under their bed. One child in particular has caused every monster assigned to him or her to quit. You decide to assign yourself. Case number 273402. Status disastrous. I stare at the file and realize I have no options. Over the last two years, every monster assigned to Charlotte Dower has quit. Every last one. Her first monster, a giant goldfish face humanoid named Bubba, had been with her for four years, and then she wasn't scared of him anymore. After that, it was a string of different common, uncommon, and rare monsters. I even assigned a sentient sock monster to her. He came back crying. I took my tablet, only one assignable monster left, myself. Field work has never been my cup of tea, but desperate times call for desperate measures. So at 8.03 p.m., after Miss Gideon tucks Charlotte and her brother Daniel, I slither into the space beneath Charlotte's bed. Across the room underneath Daniel's crib is a rookie, Chico, a standard creep kind of monster. I turn my attention to the bed above me. Charlotte is still awake, but barely. I reach up over the bed and run an ice-cold finger over her cheek. Silence, so I do it again. I'm not afraid of you, monster, she whispers, but her voice is shaking. I can see a small clock on the wall. 8.14. A door somewhere in the house slams, and there is an audible hitch of breath from above me. A few minutes go by. I can hear Francis Gideon yelling at his wife. There are heavy footsteps on the stairs and loud, panting breaths. Charlotte scrambles off the bed, and she crawls under the bed with me. Move over, Charlotte hisses at me. I do. The door to the bedroom slams open, and I smell the stench of human intoxicants before the man even steps inside. I know why Charlotte isn't afraid of any of my monsters. She's afraid of her own. Francis reaches a hand under the bed, and I thrust my wrist into it. He starts to pull. I slither out. Wh what the... I cut Francis' next words off by unfolding to my full 12-foot height, looming over the drunken man. I caress my cold fingers down his face. If you ever touch, scare, or harm my child again, I will find you, and I will do the same to you. For all eternity, I promise to him. As Francis runs from the room, he soils himself. I pull Charlotte from under the bed, tuck her back under her covers, and kiss her forehead goodnight. I'll be back tomorrow night. Sleep well, darling. Charlotte Dower is my child. I am the monster under the bed. Wow, that is a really powerful short story. Shout out to the OP of this one, Kitten Whiskers. Uh, you did a phenomenal job writing this. Um, it gets you right in the feels, but it's also remarkably short in a sense, and I'm still able to feel for all the characters in it. So really, really great job. Thinking of all the folks who may have lost a mom or didn't exactly have one for one reason or another, I care about you. Stay strong. You are loved. My mom is dead. Thanks, buddy. You're a lunatic. I love you. And for those of you who don't know, Sal and Joe are both part of the reality TV show on True, uh, True TV, I think it is, Impractical Jokers. Uh, it's hilarious if you haven't watched it. I would definitely recommend checking it out. It's, it's a good time. He slaps your mom. What you doing? I'm not going to slap anyone's mom. I love my mom to death, and she would kill me if I ever slapped a woman. A picture of me and my mom. Dang. What a guy. And look at how jacked he is. I mean, he would probably make a slap at me if I was ever insulting to him. Look at that guy. Look at the abs on that guy. He got pecs for days. That's insane. But he still loves his mom, and that's what it's all about. So normally, I don't complain, but today, well, after lots of thoughts on the matter... I think it should be known. Multiple employees saw this guy sitting at his table with a baby possum. The possum was on the table, eating off his tray, and not one word was said to him about leaving the restaurant. 
bad for business. I won't be going back to Arby's on blank in blank. And right now, I won't be going to any Arby's. Have a bad taste in my mouth for this. I've never been to Texas, but when I do visit, I will specially come to this possum friendly and welcoming Arby's. Fantastic service and very welcoming of my service possum. And there are many more additional comments and reviews, but let's just say that they are all very possum friendly. And while I think this possum is like, look at how cute this little itty bitty baby possum is. Like I love him, but at the same time, like the person who posted the original post, I get it. It's not food safe to have animals like that in that kind of space, but but boy, is that possum super cute. I love it. He's kind of like, it's like one of those things that's like so ugly that it's cute, if that makes any sense. But I really like the public outpouring of positive opinions on this Arby's just because of the cute little table possum. You said you wanted a voodoo doll. Look, child, it lets whoever it's cursed feel what it feels. This is not a toy. It is a tool for revenge. I know, sir, but the one I want to curse is me. Walk, walk. Ah, this is what walking feels like. Ooh, it started out as creepy, and I was sufficiently creeped out, like almost salad finger style, but at the same time, it's like, ugh, oof. That's an unexpected use for a voodoo doll. Give me your money. Here you go. A dollar forty-five and a library card. You kidding me? Sorry, it's all I got right now. Even the homeless guy down the street had more than that. Wow, really? Here, take this 20, go clean yourself up. Yeah, you clearly need it more than I do. A little condescending at the end, but kind of a cute and wholesome meme. Uh, that definitely belongs in the wholesome meme category. Although, catching the bottom right of this, betamailcomic.com, what is that all about? Let me go check that out really quick. After checking, it looks like it can't find the server. All my Safari says is, can't find server. So I'm assuming this at one point in time was some sort of place where some dude who is jokingly calling himself a beta male put his comics, but uh, I can't really tell. So I guess we'll see if it changes in the future. I have known Bella for one minute and 52 seconds, and if anything happened to her, I would kill everyone around me and then myself. Nine, nine. I hope you sleep well. I'm not sure why you wish us good night here, but it's very accepted. They said 9-9, nine nine, as in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, nine, the show that the quote comes from. I'm not even sure how to respond, but the way that Lenny face is looking at me makes me feel like I was a dumb. Honestly, I was going to turn this into a whoosh moment, but I genuinely feel bad, and I know you just wanted to let me know that this was from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Nine. I'm honestly very sorry. Nah, don't apologize. I was torn between replying with that explanation and just leaving it be because it seemed really sincere but almost so sincere as to seem like you were joking huh yeah that, that youtube comment thread there actually ended up strangely wholesome most of the time it just turns into people being like i can't believe you didn't get the reference you're an idiot ah, i'm so smart but instead it turned into a moment where somebody actually learned something which is pretty cool my friends what do you think about this guy me what do you think about this guy oof i love that little guy he look like a loaf of bread with legs. Ah, oh, God, I love corgis. They're like the cutest dogs on the entire planet. Reddit helped put me on track to my dream job. Thanks, Reddit. Like anywhere on the internet, Reddit has its ups and downs, but I had a recent unexpected heartwarming experience. I've kicked around a kind of half crazy, hey, in my wildest dreams idea about leveraging my current career with my passion or hobby. Enough that I posted in that hobby subreddit just to casually inquire as to whether people thought there was any weight to the idea. By chance, my post was seen by someone who actually, in fact, runs a business doing that exact thing. We ended up exchanging some emails and phone calls. And now it looks, knock on wood, like I might actually end up doing my absolute dream job with a really decent person and cool company. And it's largely thanks to the Reddit community, or at least one of the Reddit communities. So thanks guys for teaching me to never say never. And hey, for anybody else out there with half-baked dreams, I guess you really do lose nothing by asking and stand everything to gain. That last part I completely agree with. You never know where life is going to take you. If you have a dream, if you pursue it, reach out to people and make a network with people who are currently living that dream or can find someone to essentially mentor you in that dream, 
it makes it so much easier to do because it can be really scary or lonely walking down a path, especially something like this where you want to essentially create or move into your dream job. It can be really tough to do if you don't have any sort of framework or any sort of design for it. But there is a whole breadth of knowledge. And I think that's one of the coolest things about the internet is you can find a mentor anywhere. Could be someone uh, personally, you could know them from down the street, or it could be somebody from across the entire world. There's a lot of really cool things happening on the internet, and I think a lot of people tend to focus on the negative things. So it's kind of cool to see a really awesome Reddit success story. All right, y'all, and thank you for joining me in r slash unexpectedly wholesome, where things got delightfully wholesome. I just want to throw this out there. If you have dreams, chase them. If you have things that make you happy, go do that thing. And also, if you have any uh, suggestions for subreddits, drop them in the comment section down below. Nice little segue, eh? And also, as always, at the end of every one of my videos, no glove, no love. Peace.